Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to What Happened When with the voice of your childhood, Tony Schiavone. Tony, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> it's going to be that type of morning, kids. Hang in there with me. How are you, Conrad? Is Conrad still with us, Dave? Okay. He is? Okay. You're okay? Yep. Mm-hmm. Sure am. <laughs> uh, happy Halloween to you. Happy Halloween to you, kind sir. We, uh, we have a fun Halloween photo to share with you. The fine folks at WWE got together, uh, as they do every Friday for a show they put on, on Fox called SmackDown. And, uh, well, someone who is a close personal friend of yours for many years was paid tribute to in a very, very special way. And I know you didn't see it. So I had our crack producer, Dave Silva, prepare that photo. Are you ready for this? How about that? The ladies of WWE paying homage to Mr. Doot, Doot, Doot himself, as Bruce calls him, Michael BS Haynes. Do you see this? What's your impression of this? My goodness. How great is that? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, and, uh, go ahead. He's a, he's old. He is old. Speaking of old, I saw a trick or treater this past Wednesday night. On TBS, ding dong, trick or treat. Woo. The nature boy, Ric Flair in AEW. Yeah. The day that that. you swore would never happen. Mm -hmm. You said it would never happen. You said you were going to do your best to insulate Tony Khan, but now Ric Flair has worked his way in and I can't help but wonder. Yeah. Knowing what we know has happened in the past. Okay. Jeff Jarrett's in that same locker room. Are you going to let him kill him in a parking lot? Yeah. If he wants to, oh, come on now, damn it. We've tried that once before. <laughs> hey man, it was super cool to see, uh, sting Ric Flair and Tony Schiavone on TBS in a wrestling ring together in 2023. I don't think anybody would have ever imagined that that would be the case, but how surreal was that for you, Tony? It was a special moment for me. It, it, it really was. I thought about, and Tony Khan talked to me about the 35 years ago where uh, Sting and Flair each had that match at Clash of the Champions, which was in Greensboro the same day as WrestleMania. It was kind of the, you know, it was kind of the receipt from, uh, from Jim Crockett for what Vince McMahon did to Starcade of 87. And it got me thinking about my career and it got me thinking about my relationship with sting and especially flair. And it was a very special moment for me. And I think my introduction of all of that in the ring that night was pretty genuine. And, uh, so yeah, it was pretty cool. And, uh, I really enjoyed it. I, it was, uh, it was a very enjoyable moment for me and I was honored to be a part of it. I really was. So it's been a, uh, it's been a year of, uh, so far, the tail end of the year of, uh, really great moments for me personally, you know, being inducted into the, the hall of fame in Iowa and then being, uh, celebrating the 40th, uh, year of me doing wrestling. I know you got to subtract 18 years. I get that, but it was 40 years ago that I started and, uh, then being able to reconnect with flair and, and staying was pretty big deal. So yeah, it was cool. It was a super fun moment. And, uh, we are glad that you were there, uh, doing your thing where you belong on TBS with sting and Ric Flair. It's a new era for AEW. Welcome Ric Flair. Wow. Didn't have that on my bingo card. Uh, we're going to have a fun show today. We're going to be taking a look at some old USWA. Uh, you and I have talked pretty lovingly about the attitude era of wrestling and how Mr. McMahon, that evil persona that 
Vince McMahon was able to just flip on in an instant seemingly and become the hottest heel, maybe in the history of the business and his feud with stone cold, Steve Austin. What we're going to be doing today though, is a little different. We're going to be taking a look at maybe the trial run of Vince as a television heel down in Memphis. It happened for the USWA, uh, as a little, uh, favor to Jerry Lawler and Jerry Jarrett. But before we get going, I teased this last week. I sort of peeled the curtain back. I've had a bit of a problem lately, Mm. Tony. And by lately, I mean, for a couple of months, I've been getting crazy ranting, angry voicemails. And I say voicemails because I answered a few of these calls and was just lambasted. Tried to use a little logic, rational thought that didn't go Mm. very far. So then I said, you know what? I got to figure out how to, how do you block a phone number? So I, I did that. Yeah. So when I blocked the phone number, I didn't realize this, but Tony at my, at the bottom of my voicemail tab on my iPhone, I saw there was a deleted messages thing. We've all seen that. So, okay, here's like the trash box or the recycle bin for your desktop on your computer, but for your voicemail, I get that. But then I saw that there was a thing down there called blocked messages. Yeah. Turns out about every other day for two months, I've been getting worn out on my voicemail. That same crazy person. Okay. Maybe that's diminishing. Maybe that's not the right term. I don't know, but something's going on and I can't really put my finger on what it is. I played it for a friend of ours and he said, I can't understand a word they're saying. And I said, well, I don't think it's positive. Mm. So what I wanted to do is I wanted, before we watched a little USWA, I wanted to have a chance to let you hear a voicemail or two. And okay. just get your two cents, uh, about what was said and what I should do. So, okay. Well, I see this one coming all the way down the Mississippi, but go ahead. Okay. What do you expect? I'm going to, ha- what, what's going to happen here? I, I think this is all a rib, but go ahead. It's hundred percent. Not a rib. It's a real thing. I, I'm looking okay. for some little big brother advice. So, all right. uh, go. Dave Silva has some of those voicemails prepared for us. I'm like that guy Matt who really said to climb up out and iron out. I'm gonna tell you that right now. You and Wes Flair and Clinton White and Patty McMahon better get on the footing, better get on the mayor. I can do husband. Huh? I'll pop one flat or uh I have I hate something in my guy uh my pack me and get get on the mayor pack with them right now and get them to Unlock my Facebook messenger, my sign of clock tonight. And Fort Flair better be leaving St. Louis, Missouri, right straight in there. And Fort Flair better be going to have all my plan keep my and Fort Flair and an iron women, iron women, women from Gummy and Amy Gummy, a Fox New and Fox Ben and Sarah Chloe and Bloody Love and Warren Ingram, all in one way. Remember, come up, remember, dial up here to me before 8 o'clock tonight. Mary do Hoffman, you. And Rick Flair and Dre Rat were out of life. Rick Flair and you and Clint White and Clappy McBad and they're too hot to get start her out the fat end of the night and her out the freaking out of out the freaking fat lane car tomorrow. They're too hot to get Matty Lynn out the freaking um, law money and her out the NFT and get all the gummy women out of the gummy for a while for it's shit taken care of. Call that Mary me entering your damn plan. All right. So I couldn't, uh, I mean, I know there was something about Stephanie McMahon in there, something about Ric Flair, something about Charlotte Flair. Yeah. What's your, what's your read on that one? Uh, I don't know. Maybe see that one was pretty relatively calm. We've got some real, we got some real ranters in the bag here. Okay. Um, We got it and we can't let it out because I am really getting upset. I'm ready to run. So, I'm going to help you out of here. I'm helping me with my gym. I'm in Brian Gummy and Dark Flair Club. I am really upset. I'm playing Pirate. Brian's dead. Like a giant club. And we're going to help me 
So uh, you want to take a stab at that one? No, I, I, I didn't understand a word of it. I don't think it was positive. No, it didn't sound good. I we heard have, something uh, about Ric Flair AEW, so I think that one's kind of low-key your fault, if I'm honest. I, I'm sorry, blame me for what? Well, he said Ric Flair AEW. He's upset about that, and you're you're running talent relations over there, so I've, I right. assume you're the person who extended the offer and, and signed Ric Flair to this lucrative nine figure contract that he's under right now. I doubt if that is true. Any of that. I read online um, that it was a nine figure yeah, well, deal. Well, there you go. So, you know, it's gotta be real. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. do you have any advice on these voicemails? I'm not sure. Yes. What to do. Yes. First of all, call the police. Well, well, what, what would you say? What would okay, you say? say? Say I am being harassed. Okay. I didn't know okay. that harassment. All right. Got okay. it. Being harassed. Then. When the police trace the call, trace the call. What is this? You get your, your friend, Brad. Okay? Oh, I, I can't, I, you shouldn't say his name on the show. Okay. Well, you get your friend, Brad okay. to go visit this guy oh, no, and he will never make another phone call again because either, either his, uh, his tongue will be ripped out of his mouth. Sounds or, like it may have already have been <laughs> or break the, uh, break the fingers. Or something like that. This, this guy needs, this guy needs to be beaten up. Wow. That's, that's aggressive. Yeah, yeah. Damn right. It is. Okay. I'm not, I'm not into, I'm not into, I'm not into being harassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. In 2017, I'd have slapped that on a t-shirt so fast. I'm not into being harassed. <laughs> uh, it's uh it's hard to resist my urge to put that on a t-shirt speaking of hard yeah and i recommend she- bluechew.com you know bluechew yes, will can. make your ding dong so hard and i know now that rick flair is in aew it is going to be party time he's going to be cutting promos on tv talking about staying down at the marriott on waterfront and uh ladies 28 to 58 <laughs> No husbands. 68. No wives. Hey, listen, bluechew.com is the real deal, man. It's got the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And the process is simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you receive your prescription within days. And here's the best part. It's all online, no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue juice tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. And now here's the special offer. You ready for this? Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. Think of this as like a hot tag for your wiener. Special deal right now. How about this? Try Blue Chew free. When you use our promo code WHW at checkout, just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. The promo code is WHW to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. We want to thank bluechew for sponsoring today's podcast. Tony, I don't know that I can call the police and I damn sure ain't going to have somebody go beat him up. Like they're calling the police, man. I, I just, I, I don't know what I would do that for. Some people need beaten up. Yeah. Well, because I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people need beaten up. Uh, of course I, I thought about this, that it could be Adam DeMoy on cocaine. I, I'm not sure. Wow. Well, the last right. one. That's hurtful. Okay. Uh, well, listen, Tony, while we marinate on what to do with these, uh, these crazy voicemails, cause I got them for days. I mean, if we want to keep this guy see? going, you got uh, them for days. Yes. That is harassment. You dumbass. do something about it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do though. Okay. Like that doesn't sound like, like someone what? that I can use logic and rational thought with. 
Okay, I so you block this number, but he can still send you a voicemail? It's really weird, isn't it? Like, I didn't know that was a thing. I thought once you blocked the number, it was out of your life forever. They give it you is. a little pocket hidden folder for, you know, blocked voicemails. I didn't know that was a thing. Hmm. But my, my phone kept saying, you're almost out of space. And I'm like, I don't have any saved messages. How's that possible? Well, hmm. old Goofy right here was, was, log, was clogging it up. Anyway, let's take a look at uh, why we're here today. It's Vince beat McMahon. His ass. Beat, the- beat his ass. Beat his fucking ass. Wow. Beat that motherfucker's ass. There's a lot of your a lot of your buddies in Alabama that take care of that guy. <laughs> I don't even know what to say right now. I didn't expect okay. you to go yeah. full mobbed up Tony Schiavone here. I know. Yeah, I know I'm, you're I'm Italian, now. but now okay. That's not, that shit, not funny. That shit ain't fun. That shit is harassment. You call the police, you go, you find out where he lives and you beat his ass. Guy like that's never had his ass beat. Wait, so and do you beat his ass or call the police? Cause I don't think you can do both. I think that requires more paperwork. Well, you call the police. Then you let it simmer for a while. I got gotcha. you. He gets, he gets processed at the jail. Okay. He goes home. Two or three weeks later, hello, open the door, boom, right in the fucking mouth. Wow. Okay. Boom. Drag him out on his front porch, stomp his head on the top of the front porch couple, drag him back in by his nuts, look at him, point to him, say, you ever call me again? That's just the beginning. And then before you shut the door, you say, motherfucker, boom, shut the door and that'll be it. You won't hear from him again. Well, all right. Without further ado, let's take a listen to, uh, or take a look at Vince McMahon in the USWA. Here we go. Now don't get mad. Don't get upset. The voice. I don't know who this guy is, but I kind of like what he says. Well, exactly. And you're going to like this. Billy, your voice is absolutely phenomenal. Wonderful voice. What? You know what the problem is? I take it back. The praise of all puts the hand on. Slam Diesel and these two giants. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Right into the dressing room. Whoa. Taking it to the to, to the extreme as they battle away. We're gonna take So I'm not exactly sure what we just watched right there. Uh but, call a hot open or a cold open or whatever. Well that was uh sucked. That was the fake razor and the fake diesel. Group. Michael St. John owns a radio station right up the road from me in Arab, Alabama. Now. Absolutely. We're here. We made it. Hello again, everybody. Lance Russell along with Michael St. John and the lovely Stacy. And we've got for you an outstanding, and I mean an outstanding. We've got some brand new wrestlers, but we've got a main event that's going to be something else. Michael. Boy, you talk about a headliner, Lance. We have Diesel and Razor Ramon in a match today on TV in the main event. Right here you in this You better night. believe it. In what? addition to that, the Truth Commission is going to be here. I and understand. they're taking on Steve, Di- uh, Steve uh, Dunn and Paul Diamond. And that in itself is a big main event you right here on TV. It. Can you believe this is a lineup of matches? Plus, Brian Christopher is here. And in addition to that, we've got a young man that, well, we'll explain why he's here, but uh, he's new in wrestling, and that's not really what he is here for, uh, we'll be introducing. We've got the Legends uh, segment that Stacy will have out a little bit later on. How are we going to get it all in? Well, we better get started right away, because we got a big show today. (laughs) Good idea. We'll take time out. We'll be back. We'll just kick this son of a gun off right now. So we've seen some old Memphis. This is nineties Memphis. What do you think? Well, it's, they've certainly have, uh, jacked up the production. Yeah. They're trying some different things. Yeah. (laughs) What is this a commercial for? My God. Okay. Oh, the Memphis Memphis Zoo. zoo. There's a butterflies exhibit. How about that? You ever yeah, go to the I'll, zoo I'll... to see butterflies? When I was a kid, I made no. myself a promise. If I ever made it, I'd give something back. Pugsy Bogues, man. So when I got into the NBA, 
I decided to organize charity events. What an iconic NBA player he was. Help me do it. They set me up with memory call. Hey, so oh, is, is, in your mind, do you think Vince McMahon is like the first heel authority figure in wrestling? Did that exist before, as far as you can recall? I mean, I guess no. technically, I guess technically Bischoff did it first. He did it in 96. Okay. So this, what year was this about? I mean, based on what we just saw, I think this is late 96 or early 97, but I'm saying, okay. Bischoff joined the NWO mm -hmm. in late 96 in advance of Starcade with Piper and Hogan. And it wasn't until, you know, the screw job in November of 97 that we saw any inclination that that's the direction Vince was headed on TV. So Eric beat him by about a year, but okay. as far as you know, do you remember seeing like heel authority figures in wrestling prior to that? No, they were authority figures in wrestling prior to, to Eric stayed behind the scenes, didn't they? Well, and I think, you know, any sort of on-screen commissioner type role, like a Jack Tunney or a gorilla monsoon or a JJ Dillon or Jim you know, Crockett, David he... Crockett, Jim Crockett, all that. Those were always baby faces. I feel like, yeah. All right. So we got a little promo here. Travis and his newly acquired outstanding agent, Luther Big. That's right, Luther Big, Lance. And the bottom line is this. When I came out here last week, I said big things were going to happen for Billy Joe Travis. And already, they've started to happen. Now, last week, we saw Brian Crisper laying here on the floor, bleeding, knocked out, clothes torn off of him. And... That was a good thing. We're happy. Big, with that. big, good thing. What are you out of your mind? He hit him over the head when he wasn't looking. Bam, bam, right in the back of the head. In order to mark the momentous occasion of Luther Biggs and Billy Joe Travis forming a partnership, and in light of the fun that we had here last week, beating up on uh, Brian Christopher, a good friend of mine in London, England, had this shipped to me. He's a big wrestling fan, and he was glad that somebody finally put Brian Christopher in his place. So I would like to present. To Billy Joe Travis, this guitar, and I would like to also point out that it has been personally autographed by my good friend, Mr. Rick Jagger. Oh, Rick Jagger, Rick Jagger! Rick, Rick Jagger? That's right, Rick is a good friend of mine. <laughs> oh, hey, is that a clue right there? Uh huh, Rick. Let Brian Christopher feel this, punk! Let him feel this over that dumb skelly here! Hey, matter of fact, can we see the VTR now? What happened? Well, just relax, Billy Joe. I'm in charge here, but Lance, what do you think? Should we take a look at what went yeah, on here I last week? Yeah, I want to see it! Yeah, I want everybody to see exactly what happened on it. Remember, he's behind Brian Christopher. Let's take so, is that your first time seeing Billy Joe Travis? That guy right there, the professional wrestler there, not the manager. He is uh, great, close, personal friends with Jeff Jarrett. You know, they used to be tag team champions together. How about that? I did not know that. Plus, I, I think his manager there, what was it, Luther Biggs? That's right. He may have been the one leaving the voicemail. Mm. Did you hear that little that little clip right there? I could get into that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Is that Brian Christopher in a suit right there? Yeah, I believe it is. Look at that. That sounds, I mean, you normally only saw that on court days. Some of their older stuff, they are old. Well, yeah, Deep got, purple, they're not even a group anymore, correct? We got oh. group. Wait a second, now, now, you could fool wow. me, but not him. Big reunion tour coming up, Brian, you know? Big reunion tour. Won't you come out here trying to make me look bad, all right? Look, you're making yourself look bad. I don't have to make you look bad. Now listen, I think you are nothing but a big joke. I don't think... I don't think you're no rock and roll manager or anything, but I'll tell you what, if you want to run around and say that's what you are, then that's what you are. But what you are is you're a friend of Billy Joe Travis. And any friend of Billy Joe Travis is an enemy of mine, okay? Let me tell you something. No, I'll put my hands on you all I want to. If you answer to Billy Joe Travis only from here on out, you answer to me too. You understand? Oh, I'm gonna answer yeah, you're to gonna you. Answer to me. Well, I'll tell you what. Here. I'll tell you what. You are messing with the wrong yeah. person. Yeah. Lord, you're gonna answer to us. You are an idiot, Travis. 
There's gotta be somebody out here. Come out here and run his mouth at me. What a great, what a great line. You are an idiot. (laughs) Did you ever meet Brian Christopher? No, never did. I, uh, man, I can't help, but wonder in an alternate universe, what a, what a even bigger star he would have been. Yeah. Gone way, way, way too soon, man. And what a, what a way to have it all finished too. Just awful. Yeah. I don't know that that's Luther Biggs on the voicemail, Tony. I'm going to hope it's not. Yeah. We're several minutes into this show. We've yet to see any in-ring action. I guess this is the Monday night war era, huh? That's right. Character development. Oh, they just, they just did a clip of someone in the ring. Yeah. It looks like we're about to get a match. Maybe almost as if they were listening to Conrad talk. All right. Let's we, we better go. We let you idiots get out of here. We have to go to the ring cause Conrad says, so let's go there now and don't come back. <laughs> I said, don't come back. Tony Friedman. Mm. I wonder if he's related to max. Uh, You think could be, could be max's uncle. I don't know. That guy's pretty tall. We, uh, we're watching this clip, of course, we're going to, we're going to see some, uh, some heel promo work by Vince McMahon long before he was doing it on national TV. When you think about the real life heels in wrestling, because yeah. our pal Cody Rhodes was the first person I heard say this in real life, that the heels in real life are baby faces and the baby faces in real life are heels, right? Who, who do you think is the most surprising okay. backstage heel of all time super baby face out front but boy just eat you alive in the backstage area i that's kind of a a, a tough a tough one in a tough term because um backstage heels how do you describe a backstage heel an actually mean person or a person who just loves to give people shit i mean i'm I'm considered a backstage heel because I give the wrestler shit all the time. And I learned it from the master Conrad Thompson. (laughs) Okay. So you give people shit, but are you a heel? But no, you're really not. So that's, so we needed to put a definition on backstage heel. I'll let you define it. Okay. I'm just saying someone who was in real life, stark contrast to their on-screen character. Oh, wow. Well, it ain't flair. No, he is what you see. Yep. Hmm. I will give you an answer before the show's over, but I, I can't help, but look at this and, and notice the lighting that they have behind Lance and the lighting they had behind the fans during that 30 second match. We just saw <laughs> that's about what it was too. I think they're going to yeah. take a commercial break here. Uh-huh. And, uh, and we will too. Okay. We're going to take this time out to talk about our friends over at Henson shaving boy. Now that Ric Flair is in AEW, I'm sure you guys are stocked up and I want to get you in the spirit. I want to get you a hundred free blades that could get you a hundred five-star matches in 1983. Here's how it works. You see at Henson shaving, we just love what these guys are about. This wasn't even the original plan, you know, making razors. It turns out they're actually a family owned aerospace parts manufacturer. Yeah. These cats have made parts for the international space station and the Mars Rover. And then one day they said, Hey man, what if we took these old aerospace grade CNC machines and see how thin we could cut a razor. What they discovered was they could cut razors that were thinner than a human hair. Now what you're thinking, how thick's a human hair? They're thinner than 0.0013 inches. Now what that means for you is a more secure and stable blade that gives you a vibration free shave. Now that matters because with less vibration, you're less likely to get nicks and cuts and scrapes. Not only that, this Henson razor also has a built-in channel on either side to evacuate hair and cream. You see what Henson wanted to do was create the best razor, not the best razor business. 
If they were really concerned about business, the well, they'd have proprietary parts and planned obsolescence and it'd be made out of plastic and they'd sign you up for some hokey subscription. None of that exists here. Instead, Henson razor uses a standard dual edge blade that well, Ric Flair and every other wrestler is very familiar with, but old pop pop never had a razor this thin. So it gives you the benefits of an old school feel and also the benefits of new school tech. Not only that, it's also more affordable. We're all used to this trade-off in life where when things cost more, it's because they're better. That's at least the way our brain is preconditioned. Like, oh, well, it's more expensive. It's probably better. What if you could find the opposite? It's better, but cheaper. That's ends and razors. Let's say no to subscriptions. Let's say yes to a razor that will last you a lifetime. Visit hensonshavingcom slash Tony. Pick the razor for you and use the code Tony and you'll get two years worth of blades free with your razor. Just be sure to add them to your cart. That's 100 free blades. When you head to H E N S O N S H A V I N G.com slash Tony and use the code Tony. So without further ado, let's get back into it. USWA. Here we go. In three, two, one play. Join us for the Baptist Head to Toe Health Expo June 7th at the Mid-South Fairgrounds. We'll have healthy foods, games for the children, free health screenings. Who the fuck goes to that? Like fitness author Joe Piscatella and Bob Green, Oprah's personal trainer. Also, the Baptist Garden of Eating and the Baptist Maternity Fair. Register Who goes to this? Free airline tickets and other great prizes. So come the Garden to the of Eating. June 7th Baptist <laughs> Head to Toe Health Expo. Hey, <laughs> next time you go to catering and you see Arn Anderson and Taz in there, just hit them with that. Oh, look, this must be the Garden of Eating. That'll get a pop. Kids that I sat next to in the third grade from that guy in the marching band. Luckily, my mom's got Bell South caller ID. Now I can even tell you who's calling no matter where they live in the country. So I can decide whether I want to pick up the phone or not. Kirk Ryan. Kirk Ryan, Bell South. It's all here. Wow. Bell Wait. South is all gone, by the way. Look who that is in that commercial. That's Seth That's Green. Like Whoa. It's a baby shaving. There are two elephants kissing. It's Gandhi, and he's doing that Heisman Trophy thing. When you eat a big, juicy Rally's barbecue bacon. My bacon, God. Hmm. You get hours of free entertainment. I had no idea that Seth Green was doing place, it doesn't belong burger commercials Cheap or rallies. Cash. I got a great deal on this car. Just two minutes from downtown Memphis across the bridge to Riverside Auto Auction. The only public auto auction what, what, in the What was that? I bought this car for my daughter for $750. Cheap cars for cash. <laughs> I bought this car for what I would have paid down somewhere else. Riverside Auto Auction. Gates open at 10. The auction starts at noon this Saturday. Just across the river, take the Mount City exit. Why are they playing the cops theme over this? You don't need credit. Cheap cars for cash. What was Cheap that about? Hot cars for cash. As a matter of fact, we don't have need for you right now because we've got Paul Diamond coming out here. Right, I know. That's why I'm out here. I, I wondered, that's for a fact. I'm out here to talk about something real, a real sport, not that sissy stuff that you're going to talk to about Paul Diamond. So you just talk to me, and you get on the headset and tell him to stay back there. Hey, here comes Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. This guy comes out. He is not due out here, and let's ignore him at all. We got Paul Diamond here because we want to do a little introspective, up close and personal with Paul about the fact that a lot of you may not know that this young man started out in professional soccer it was really a dream of yours all the time wasn't it? uh it sure was lance that was actually my first love uh all my life I you ever meet paul diamond soccer. back in 1980 yeah. i was uh, fortunate to be the sixth pick overall. that's right he was in the wwf when you were there or in express uh-huh six pick overall. he and uh keep it down mike I'm i'll think of his name something serious here about it he was the sixth i heard he was a dj at a strip club in the early 2000s Really? Yeah. That's when I knew that guy had life figured out. <laughs> I mean, imagine your life, you, you go from getting paid to be a pro wrestler to you get paid to play rap songs 
or girls get naked and you can sleep late. You know, it's not like they get, you don't have to get up early. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you want to sleep till lunch. No problem. I got had life figured out. And you probably as a DJ in a strip club was a very, very, you probably were a very, very popular person with the ladies. Well, he at what least can I play for you, sweetie. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Look at you picking up on a putting down. Hey, so, uh, who's, who's the blonde guy on the left here, man. I'm, I'll be honest. I don't, I don't have a fucking clue. Yeah. Kind of looks like a, a young version of Dick Murdoch in a way. What that. Okay. Some little discount store. You got a whole soccer team. You're going to play football. You get a real helmet like this, which costs about $350, maybe 500. If you get a good one, like I would buy, then by the time you get the shoulder pads and everything to outfit one guy on one team might cost $800 or in the professional ranks, which I know professional football and a professional soccer are not the same thing. It costs you a dollar fifty there. Might cost them a thousand or more to outfit a professional football player. That's a man sport. That's for little losers that can't play football, pal. You stand out here making a fool of yourself. Well, this is fucking terrible. I know. He can do more stuff with that with that soccer ball right there than you can do with both hands and everything else. Now, why do you come out here and do this? What are we doing? Explain one other thing. I don't know, but he's getting a tongue lashing from Lance, buddy. Haven't you? At least I sleep. He did on his radio program just a couple of weeks ago a whole little thing about how playing soccer is causing brain damage in these little children. They're out there. What? Yeah, brain damage. Right? Brain damage. They hit the, they the ball on their head all over, and it causes brain damage. I played soccer pretty much all Well, you see what's life. going to happen here. I've hit the ball with my head hundreds of times. Okay, well, it doesn't cause brain damage. Thank you very much for proving my point. You're a soccer player, and you're the dumbest guy I've ever met. So you just proved my point. Boy, well, yeah, you didn't prove anything except that you're out here irritating. Get all blown up if you want to, but I'm telling you, I can prove it. All blown up. You're man enough to let me hit you in the head with that soccer ball? You're man enough? You, well, let's prove it. Let's prove it. Yeah, we can prove it. That's no problem. Oh, you're going to let me prove it? Yeah. What about that, fans? You think he's... You're going to let me prove it? Well, really? you don't have to go along with this thing. This guy's Prove out here he's not supposed to be out oh, here yeah, yeah. and what why don't, now you want to hit him in the face why don't you back up so you don't get hit right out here please get right there what now as hard as i can i can hit you in the head with this yeah what are we doing watch this goodbye to about 20 brain safe take care watch out now paul All right. well Well, you know what's wrong? What's wrong? You've got an old hard head for many years of abuse. These little bitty kids don't have that. They've got the soft spot in the back of their head, and that's where a lot of them get hit. The they soft get spot. The soft spot. Nobody gets hit in the back of the head. Yes, they do. What the fuck are we doing? Kids, they're not trained. They're not professionals like you. You're a big professional, right? Let me hit you in the back of the head. One time with a soccer ball. That's ridiculous. Come on. This is ridiculous. One time. Okay. We've got Oh, okay, if you're too afraid to prove my point, I understand. I'll leave. No, I'm not too afraid, but that's ridiculous. Nobody gets hit in the back of the head. Turn around and let me do it. One time. No. No. For all the little, for all the little kids out there that want to play soccer, you're going to turn your back on them. Just turn your back on me one time. One time. For all the little kids. Just look. Right here in the soccer What spot. are we doing? Trust me. I'm not, oh. not, he's trying to tell you they don't get hit in the back of the head, Mike. Sorry, little kids. Paul Diamond won't prove the point here, so you guys are just forget it, right? I'll prove the point one time. All right. With the soccer ball. He knows it's right there. It's right there. One time. He's already had to. Oh, yeah. That's why he get him turned around. Hit him with that helmet. Come on, Mike. Come on. Uh, That's exactly the kind of stuff you. Tony, what are the odds that these fellas won uh, Booker of the Year? <laughs> Who was the booker back then? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody will claim this. Uh, wow. Remember well done. Yeah. Well, there they go. All right. Thank God we got to take a break. <laughs> reintroducing the two dollar bill in recognition of hardy's incredible two for two offer two delicious double cheeseburgers for just two dollars hardy double cheeseburgers 
What makes Hardy's tender steak sandwiches so great? Well, it's all in how you slice the beef. Real thin. Hardy's tender steak sandwiches. Slice thin to be tender and juicy for lunch and breakfast. Hardy. I don't remember that at all, do you? No. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Good thing you. But I can tell you what's going on here. What's going on here? Uh, as far as uh, the commercials are, are yeah. concerned. Yep. Yeah, lower, lower it down a little bit there, Dave. I've asked three times. I'm sorry. This is the all-new Ford Expedition. Compared to what we saw from the 80s, there's a lot more local commercials back then. You're right. See, so, so they're... they're so they, These are more a lot signature buy, more uh, yeah, national buys. National, national buys, which means they're not selling enough uh, the commercials they used to sell because they're not getting the numbers they used to get because wrestling has changed, obviously. Yeah, that Baptist Health Expo was not a paid spot. That was uh, a PS, PSA. Yes, right. This right here is a sale. Yeah. Trying to get people to come gamble. Right. That's Southland. That's a local, that's a local buy. Do you ever go watch, uh, do you ever go to a dog track in your life where they race yeah. dogs? Yeah, I sure did. I've never Back been to the... that. That feels like something I wouldn't enjoy. Like, I don't think the dogs want to be there. Right. I'm not so sure. I know greyhounds just love to freaking run and, uh, it's not like they're getting, I, 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 I can't answer that. I just remember going back to a dog track. I'm talking about the eighties when I was with the Charlotte baseball team. Oh, wow. Okay. And we were in, uh, at spring training, it went to Hollywood, Florida, and they call the little bunny Hollywood. So the, uh, the announcer would say, here comes a Hollywood and the bell would ring and the dogs take off. Yeah. I didn't, um, I've never actually seen that. I've never even been to a horse race though. I don't know. It's animals mm -hmm. racing. I've, I've missed. Mm -hmm. So a little promo here for movies, uh, Oh, wow. Okay. So we know exactly where we are time-wise now mission impossible. Mm -hmm. And man, these are the good old days right here. So this is just where they're promoting uh cable stuff. Yeah. By the way, this was, uh, what we're watching is from the end of may 1997. Okay. So before we would see Mr. McMahon do his thing on TV. Uh, on the USA network, he was doing mm -hmm. some evil shit down here in Memphis, Tennessee, <laughs> which, uh, we just came from, by the way, yeah, how was it? It was, it was fine. It was it's first time I'd ever, uh, had, had gone to the, uh, that arena where the, uh, Grizz, Grizzlies play. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Did you, and uh, it's right. It's right on Beale street there, you know, right. Right next to Beale street. I, I was, uh, at a WWE pay-per-view there a few years ago. Yeah. Have you been to, uh, or did you hit any Memphis barbecue spots while you were there? Uh, no, of course not. Well, why would you do that? Yeah. Well, because you know, I'm right now, I'm, uh, a lot of times I did in Memphis fly in the morning of stay, go right to the arena, stay there from like 10 AM till it's over, go right to the hotel and take the first flight out the next morning. I don't even stay in the town 24 hours normally. Oh, wow. Okay. Just in and out. You like, you're, you're like, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Jones. We have seen one thirty second in wrestling match. It's, it's kind of a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so what's your name, son? And where are you from? And why are you standing out here next to me? How, how you doing there, buddy? Uh, uh, go ahead. Well, I'm a wrestler. And I want to work for the Jarrett's and I want to face, uh, Jerry Jarrett. And I'd like to go up against Jeff Jarrett, but I understand that he's a dickhead and doesn't like to wrestle. Well, I do know that you do know that Jeff Jarrett is married to one of the most evil bitches ever. Did you know that? And did you know he got Tony Schiavone got in trouble for calling her an evil bitch on TV? Oh, oh I didn't know that. Uh, didn't know that. I, I know she's mean, I get it. And, uh, well, let's take a look at some footage. Hey, did you really get in trouble for referring to Karen as an evil bitch? Not uh, from her. She gave, she gave me a hard time. Oh, she don't count. <laughs> she um, 
She said, my mom, my mom said, did you, did you hear what he called you? And then the next night, uh, the next time after she told me that, I said, uh, man, she uh, she is an evil bitch. And w- wonder what her mom thinks of her. Oh, there you go. So. A little fun for the whole family. Yes. Dun, 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 so this is dun. the truth commission that we're seeing here. The truth commission. Yeah, Boy. They, they were in the WWE at the time. And so obviously this is a bit of a developmental territory for them. Like even that opening match, Billy Joe Travis was wrestling a young Nick Dinsmore. So he would okay. go on to be Eugene. Um, but this of course is years before Eugene, but yeah, the, uh, the truth commission recon and interrogator are the tag team. That's going to be here. And I think they're even the USWA tag team champions, but how about the commandant? He's their manager. Hmm. You a big commandant guy. No, I'm not big into the commandant. Man, Isn't I that thought, kind of a, I thought for thing? sure you would be in the commandant. I mean, I thought no. for sure you'd be in the him. No. Huh. The commandant was, uh, Robin B. Smith, Robin B. Smith. Yeah. Now I knew Robin B. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now we're going to have some wrestling soon. Eventually Any time now, let me sit down on my chair here first. And we're, whatever, what happened to Dave Brown in this era? They didn't want to use him or I think the deal was he was on a different station. Oh, gotcha. Doing weather, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. He's, he's like a real boy. You see. Yeah. There's your man, uh, Tony Friedman. Yeah. Uncle of Max. I don't know about that. Hmm. There's the commandant. Recon and the interrogator, the Truth Commission. I think you would have really liked working with Kurt in there. Well, I I just saw that footage that we showed up there. That Here's the commandant. And I just want to say, do you condone allowing members of the audience to come and interfere in a professional wrestling match? Are you sick? No, you know that I don't condone that. We. J- just got through saying we're not recommending that. But here's a guy that sat there, took all that he could take out of it. You guys were getting ready to burn an American flag. You took it away from somebody in the audience. Who kept and he on waving could, it in my face? I don't recommend it, but I'll tell you one thing. He couldn't stand it. I, he I was patriot to, enough not to let you do that. I want to know something. Tell me, if you buy a ticket to go to a football match, do you suddenly run into the field to make an intercept? Or okay, the pass, I get you. Huh? I get your point, and you've got it where there's no question that you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't run out on a football field or a baseball field or in the ring at a wrestling match. But here's a guy that's in the armed services himself, serving the country, and he couldn't stand to see you do what you did. Let's just get beyond all this nonsense. Please, please. But what I do know today is that uh, this gentleman does not have a partner for our tag team match. Everybody saw what happened to Paul Diamond out here just a little while ago. And I got a stinking feeling you're behind it. Stinking. Everybody knows you're running with samples now. Well, that's fine and dandy because everybody knows my history with these two goofs. So that's Stephen Dunn. What do you think of that haircut Stephen Dunn's sporting here? It's like a flying Brian type haircut from back in the day, isn't it? Man, that is one of the most aggressive mullets I remember seeing in all of wrestling. Well, I have a stinking feeling it is. Is that the most eighties phrasing of all time or what <laughs> stinking feeling? I have a stinking feeling, not a sinking feeling, a stinking thing. Mm-hmm. Stinking. Yeah. Wow. And again, holy shit. We've had no wrestling dude. I mean, I mean none. almost none. Yeah. Wow. But don't worry coming up. We're going to see fake diesel versus fake razor Ramon. So. I know you'll be riveted by that. I can't wait. I mean, I, the whole reason to put this show up here was to see a heel Vince McMahon. And right now I'm, I'm thinking that a heel Vince McMahon is going to save this show. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this. He ain't going to hurt it. <laughs> oh, here comes that kid again. I'll be your partner. Yeah. Put me in there. Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. 
Put me in there. Yeah, I'll, there's a ring right there. I'll go right there right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get your, get your, uh, come on. Get your beret wearing asses in there. Come on. Come on. I got jeans on. I don't give a shit. I know jeans will put you up against my nuts when I take a body slam. I don't care. Let's go. All right, here we go. Ready? Bring the motherfuckers on. Come on. Bring them on. Well, you know, this is Lance Russell uh, had been working for us prior to this. That's right. Because when I came back to WCW, he was there uh, doing a lot for the uh, the 900 number. And uh, so I guess uh, during the Eric Bischoff era, he left. I, I can't remember when, when Lance left, but he did leave, I guess, and went back to Memphis. Or maybe he was doing Memphis at the same time. I don't know. But, um, boy, in 1997, can you imagine, and I say this respectfully, cause boy, I love the independence and I love what independent wrestling does for young talent, but this is up against ECW, you know, right after they've jumped on the pay-per-view train. Cause this is the end of May, 1997. And they had their first pay-per-view in April of 97. April of 97 or the very end of March is also where we had that incredible. I quit match at WrestleMania between Brett and stone cold. And you guys are knee deep in the NWO, like hanging around with Dennis Rodman at the pay-per-views and crow sting and the diamond cutter and that incredible feud that DDP had with Randy Savage. That's all happening at the same time. This show we're watching is, and when you really think about comparing those products. It's no wonder that the, uh, the end was near here for the territories, huh? Yeah. This is the last, uh, this is the, the end of it, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Got to give them credit. They were trying, but no doubt, uh, time had passed them by. Had passed them by with the internet and cable TV and Think of how, think of how much, uh, things have changed since then too. It's, I mean, now we got streaming services and, Yeah, and you can watch matches on your phone. It's just, <clears throat> it's amazing. It really is the technology. What, what technology has done for wrestling and what technology did to kill, um, uh, the territories. But independent wrestling still thrives, which is good. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's thriving, but it's still with us. It's still. Well, okay. It's still with us. Yes. Okay. I guess some do thrive, don't they? Some do I well. I don't know that any independent organization is crushing it. I mean, I know that, I know that there are several that are doing well, Okay. but well is a relative term. I think like. Unless you're like a Matt Cardona where you're working nonstop and you, you're very innovative in, in your approach to merchandising and alternate revenue streams. I think most independent wrestlers, uh, either, you know, have a, have a real gig or they're, uh, they're living pretty lean to chase that dream. Yeah. Of course, the over uh, the overhead has to be incredible, and what I mean by overhead is that if you bring someone in of name, and and and, and you know Tony Khan does allow our guys uh, to to wrestle independent shows when it's not in conflict with our TV shows, but if you bring in a big, you're gonna have to pay that big name to come in. Yes, and their air and their hotel and and, and. that's right. Yeah, right. So, so you may I, get a deal. You may get a deal on the building. You may get a deal on everything else, but. Man. Yeah. A guy like Cardona, he's got it figured out. I hope that a lot of independent guys are following, you know, his lead. And obviously right. a lot of that was set in motion by Cole, Cole Cabana. Like once upon a time, he was the most entrepreneurial person outside of a major company. And of course he's doing a lot of other things these days, including AEW. but, uh, right. Cardona, man, he's, he's the, uh, personification of that. Yeah. How about Kurrigan, man? He's like as tall as the top rope. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes, it is. When you really think about it, I mean, that's pretty wild. So I think the fellow who was tagging with, uh, Mr. Dunn there is Brian Farron. Okay. 
So I don't know if I would say that's my favorite Brian Farron skit, but there it is. I think they're about to uh, take a commercial break here, Tony, and we're going to do okay. the same. All right. Um, then. we're going to talk to you a little bit about, well, that famous phrase. We've all heard it. Where'd you get that? Whenever you got something cool, somebody yeah. always hits you with that. Don't you want to hear that this holiday season? Uncommon sure. goods can be your secret weapon. Uncommon goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for your secret Santa or your entire family, uncommon goods has exactly what they want. And here's a, a few really cool gifts that you can check out over at uncommon goods. Have you been to the uncommon goods website yet, Tony? Yes, I have. There's something in there for everybody. Yeah. It's, they got stocking uh, it, stuffers. They got Christmas stock. gifts. They got stuff for kids, stuff for men, stuff for women. They've even got stuff like jewelry, Tony. They got something for everybody. When you shop at uncommon goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. You see, these fine products are often made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season, uncommon goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the USA. They also have the most meaningful out of the ordinary gifts you'll find anywhere from art and jewelry to kitchen to home and bar uncommon goods truly does have something for everyone. And these aren't just the same lackluster gifts you could find all anywhere. You want something uncommon. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give back $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. How about that? They've donated over $2.5 million to date. And to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash WHW. That's uncommongoods.com slash WHW for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommongoods.com slash WHW uncommon goods. We're all out of the ordinary. Let's get back to USWA. This show is anything but ordinary for us here on what happened when in three, two, one play. I like that. We're coming back from commercial with a commercial. Cause that's how we do things here. On WHW. Nobody undersells us. Nobody beats us. Nobody's better than we are. What? Well, I must be nobody. Great selection of 1996 pre-titled neons on sale from $89.95. Only $89.95 for a 96 neon with automatic air and stereo. Beautiful 96 Seabree convertibles with automatic air, power locks, and more. $15,995. $15,995 for a Seabree convertible. So when they say nobody beats our price, I'm the nobody they're talking about. When I was a kid, I made myself a promise. If I ever made it, I'd give something back. So we see Muggsy Bugs here again. By the way, uh, I don't know how much time you spent over the, on that Uncommon Goods website, but did you see they have game used base stools? So like, it's a stool for a man cave, but the seat is actually a base from one of your favorite baseball teams. Didn't see that, but I did see the different glasses you could get for your football, your favorite football team. I thought that was cool, man. I mean, the idea yeah. that this is a, a base that was actually used in a Braves game or a Yankees game, right? That's all over there right now at uncommongoods.com slash WHW. That's, cool. that's pretty fun. Yeah, it is. Where are you at on, uh, on Sonic drinks? Mm. I'm, I, I, I very rarely have gone to Sonic, so I don't know. Boy, I, those, those are fighting words for Dave Silva. Really? Dave Silva and his family are on a first name basis with, uh, the fine folks at the drive through at the Whataburger and at the Sonic. Wow. Yeah. How's the Whataburger business in, uh, in Huntsville? Well, when they first opened it, they had to shut down the, uh, the road. Yeah. It was, it was same pretty here bad. In, same here in Cobb County. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. Now I don't go to that side of town very often, uh, but as I understand it, they're still doing a uh, pretty good business over there. Well, it means it's quality food then. Well, I don't or, know about that. I, I, I fucking, I'll be honest. I, I hate it. I hate it a lot. Okay. I don't like well, it it's, even a little. Okay. T uh, tasty food then. Well, here's the King. So. Yeah. Let's go full screen on the King here for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. 
full screen on the screen. Right here. Uh, hey, what about this young man coming just kind of risking life and limb and just went at it? I'm telling you, uh, you know, you always like to, well, it's sort of, sort of like you said, you're not really going to condone something like that because it's very, very dangerous. But uh, a little bit of different situation in the fact that I think this young man had, like you said, some wrestling background and, and uh, especially uh, I, I was talking to him back there beforehand and he said, you know, it's two things I always loved my whole life. One was wrestling, the other was my country, and I guess he proved that, proved both of those facts today. You know, he joined the armed forces, and uh, yeah. and then uh, a guy like that is not going to stand by and watch some jerks like the Truth Commission do what they were planning to do to the flag. So, I mean, you know, good thing. Uh, uh, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have necessarily advised him to jump right into the, the fire uh, today, no. though. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of jumping into the fire, Lance, I just want to come out here real quick and say a, a couple of words about the situation that I've touched on before. A lot of people realize that... Uh, I've had some challenges uh, from this group of wrestlers or wrestling or what, it, what, what are they called? ECW, Lance, and I know you're familiar with them, and, uh, but a lot of people now, a lot of people uh, around the country have not necessarily uh, had an opportunity to see these people. Um, it's, it's a group of wrestlers or, or a wrestling organization out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or at least that's where they're based. Uh, they call themselves Extreme Championship Wrestling. It's been my contention that it's sort of like a bunch of misfits and a bunch of rogues and renegades who have banded together. Guys that couldn't really catch on with a major wrestling organization. They banded together and formed their own little group of, uh, of uh, madness and mayhem. And, and, and basically, these guys just look like they try to kill each other up there, you know. And uh, so I went on national TV on the World Wrestling Federation on Monday Night Raw, and I just told everybody what I thought of these guys. I think it's a... I think it's a uh, well, I'll say. I said ECW to me stands for Extremely Crappy Wrestling. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, this has made some of these guys a little upset. And so now there have been some challenges made. And, uh, and apparently, uh, one of their main guys is some guy named Tommy Dreamer. You got, you, somebody heard of Tommy Dreamer? Not many of them, but some of them have. Them. <laughs> Not well, many anyway, of them. Anyway, My Tommy God. Tommy Dreamer apparently says that... Uh, he wants to try a little bit of the king on. Now, I, I see this extreme wrestling, and these guys throw themselves through tables, and they beat each other over the heads with chairs. And, Lance, you know that me and the Moon Dogs and people like that and Jimmy Bay and said, we were doing that a long time ago. Right a here, long time. Right here in the USWA. So let me tell you guys, you're not going to show us anything we hadn't seen, but they sent a video down here. And just to show you, uh, just to show you, I guess, maybe what kind of people they are, uh, they went out and somehow got the... Uh, got the okay to do a video with a group called Nirvana. You ever heard of that group? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's a group that's so stable and such a role model for kids that the lead singer took a shotgun and blew his brains out. Oh, my. Okay? <laughs> now, this, this is the kind of stuff that they associate with. But I want, I want it in all fairness, because these guys apparently are going to be coming here to issue a challenge or to, uh, to try to prove what they can do. So let's just take a look at a couple of minutes of this uh, extreme championship wrestling, if we can. Okay, here they are. Wow. How about a little ECW package with some unlicensed music? Well, they did throw a courtesy up there. What's your favorite Tommy Dreamer match? Oh, God. It had to be. Uh, I, 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 I don't know. But I know we've, we've watched a number of them here on this program, on this podcast. We probably not only Not only unlicensed music, unlicensed music video, right? Uh, yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. Just ripping yeah. the whole thing off. Right. But hey, uh, they did give a little courtesy at the front of it. Paul Heyman uh, never really let things like uh, legalities get in the way. And mm. it seems like uh, Memphis is also going with the less ask forgiveness rather than permission routine. Yeah. I think Crockett's did that, did that for years. You know, as we're recording this today, it's, it's Halloween and, uh, I know folks are listening to it the day after Halloween, but are you going to go trick or treating or do anything fun tonight for Halloween, Tony? I'm going to sit out, uh, in the, uh, driveway with, uh, with dog treats and candy for kids and maybe a beer or two for the adults. Oh, let's take a listen. 
Tommy Dreamer. Hey, they want to see some wild stuff. Let me let me go with Stacy and pull out some of the Legends material on the King here, and you'll see him beating up people like that. Exactly. Well, all I all I gotta say is it looks like it's gonna happen. Uh, Tommy Dreamer from the ECW is going to be right here in the USWA, and all I'm going to tell you right now is they say that they like pain, they say that they like to be abused, they say that they like to get beat on. Well, let me tell you something, Tommy Dreamer. If you like pain, if you like to be abused, if you like to be beat on, when you step in the USWA and you step in the ring with me, it's going to be the happiest day of your life. Because if you like it, you're going to get plenty of it. So come on down and see us, because the king is here waiting for you, okay? Ah, I tell you, this is uh, this has been a lot of conversation about this all over the country, and the king is dead serious. He issued the challenge out, come and get me if you want me. We want some more of it. We'll be back, Michael, in just a moment. Tony, I can't help but wonder, have I been watching two months Memphis wrestling? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate that feedback. Yeah. I, we, we've, we've been watching too much. Of it. Why would you say I've been watching too much of it? <laughs> you remind me of that commercial. Uh, what was the, uh, what was the margarine that every, every time you, you took a bite of it, a crown would pop on your head. Oh, I don't remember that. Sounds like you a don't? good promo though. Yeah. God, it was some, it was a margarine set and it'll go. And then the bell will go ding. Silva says Imperial Imperial. That's it. Dave's right. Imperial margarine. Well, I don't know about Imperial margarine, but I do know <laughs> that amazing right. kind is a family run business specializing in plant-based pain relief and wellness support for both mood and sleep. Their products are of the highest quality and sourced from GMP certified manufacturers. Their products are all tested for quality and purity to ensure that what you were buying is of the highest quality and exactly what it says on the label. Here's the heads up. Lois loves it. So does Megan. Yes. The amazing kind offers a wide range of high quality topicals, infused oils, and soft gels, including CBD, CBG, and CBN. The amazing kind infused oils are made from all natural sun grown hemp and infused with nutrient dense MCT oil. And the founder of this company actually used to work in the wrestling business. In fact, he was a producer slash editor for the WWE working on some commercials and marketing. And now he's turned his sights to pain relief. The CBD infused oil is next level. If you're looking to support relaxation, balance, and just an overwhelming sense of calm, along with having potential pain relieving and anti-inflammatory effects. And the amazing kind of infused oils come in a dropper bottle and can be taken under the tongue for fast acting effects or mixed into food and beverages. I believe that this has greatly benefited our sleep here at the Thompson household. And I know that the research is still in its early stages. But there are some studies that suggest that CBN might actually be useful for improving sleep quality and addressing sleep related issues that has worked for us. It has a sedative effect, which is often associated with trying to help induce a state of relaxation and calmness. And that of course is more conducive for falling asleep. That's the challenge for a lot of us is to actually fall asleep and CBN may actually reduce the time it takes to do just that fall asleep. It also can help you provide prolonged sleep. Some users have reported that CBN can extend the duration of sleep, which allows for a more restful, rejuvenating sleep experience. And CBN might actually help reduce the number of awakenings you've had during the night, which is going to allow you more uninterrupted sleep. So if you're suffering from insomnia, CBN could be helpful for you, helping you fall asleep and stay asleep. And especially if you're having trouble sleeping because of pain, maybe your sleep is disrupted because of pain, man, check out amazing kind. They've got plant-based infused oils for mood support, everyday comfort and sleep only at the amazing 
by now at theamazingkind.com and get 10% off all of your orders when you use our promo code WRESTLE. That's theamazingkind.com and get 10% off all of your orders with the promo code WRESTLE. Let's get back to USWA here. We're uh, maybe watching a little too much Memphis lately. I don't know. Here we go. In three, two, one, play. Curlow Construction. At Curlow, we're improving Memphis, one home at a time. 100% financing they were bragging about there. Friday wow. the 13th. Oh, my God. At the neon moon. It's really? going to be like El Dia de las Muertes. The Day of the Dead, chicos. <laughs> and it's going to be loco. It's going to be crazy with the water pistolas and the food fight after everything. Oh. And you... And me, Razor, Billy Travis. Because after it's all over, I think maybe you are going to be the most popular on the most hated list and squirted and food fought and then beat up by the Razor on top of it all. Squirted. Mm. <laughs> that blew me away. We got some representatives here from the Nia Moon, I think, right over here. And they're going to have water, water fights and food there fights. Out there. Water pistolas. Yeah. There's some agua pistolas. Right there. Agua. And, uh, Over on down, uh, state Senator from Mississippi. We are appreciate. And also from hi, and, and from, uh, and down to his right, we have a, uh, Sergeant from the military police and from a police station in Germany. Graffin war is that, that's a Graffin beer. Well, we appreciate you coming. Also, uh, what Tony the fuck are we doing? From, here? Struck from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, all the way from Baton Rouge. Anyhow, glad to have all of you here and appreciate very much you're coming out to uh, see us. Um, we were talking with Jerry just a moment ago about the return of wrestling to the big one. Have uh, we gotten a card yet on that? Don't have a whole card, Lance, but it'll be. Next Saturday afternoon here in Memphis at the Big One, it'll start at 2 o'clock next Saturday afternoon at the Big One. There'll be seven big matches on tap already signed up. Billy Travis with his new uh, manager or his business agent, Luther if you would. Biggs. Luther Biggs. They will yeah. be there to take God. on Brian Christopher. Big we ever going to do wrestling? Ramon will take on his former best friend, Big Daddy Cool Diesel. Vince should do a run-in right now. One. And, of course, uh, uh, the big match we were talking about a little bit earlier, Jerry the King Lawler will take on the ECW's Tommy Dreamer in the big main event. Also, I understand we'll have a Legends match between Dutch Mantel and Gypsy Joe as a result of what happened here on television last week. Y yeah, right. I mean, to tell you, Dutch nailed him with that whip out here. So, that already, hey, <laughs> that's no bad card right there Absolutely. in itself. And that's not the entire card. It's going to be next Saturday. It'll be right not too long after we're done right here uh, on the on the TV. And I'm looking forward to being out at the big one and meeting all of you out there. When the USWA comes back to town right here in Memphis out at the there big one. Go. Looking forward to it. Uh, somebody else? Uh. Introducing right at the moment. Mr. Tony Friedman. Tony, tell us what's happening. Ah. Uh, Lance, you mentioned all the fine people that we have here today, some of the special folks. Want to say hi to everyone in the crowd from Helena, Arkansas. We were there at the Lady Luck Casino last week. Got a chance to visit with some of them, hand out some studio tickets. Dude. And it was great. We're going to be back there this Wednesday night. This is the worst the wrestling show I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's the worst one I've ever June seen. June the 11th, 8 p.m. at the Lady Luck Casino. How, the how is this it's still running, running in 1997? Lance, it is a party every time we go to the Lady Lady Luck, and I love it. I got to tell you, it's just, I, I'm i I'm really jealous that I haven't been there on a Wednesday night. This is cruel and unusual I'm punishment. I'm forward, though, coming up Wednesday, because that is a fun time, and I love fun time. time. We'll see you Wednesday night, June the 11th. Right Boy Lance is working his ass off on this, you know it. June the 12th, oh, yeah. 8 p.m., we're going to be in Huntington, Tennessee. So the is the Vince Center, McMahon thing uh, at the end of this show or at the middle of it, or where is it? Well, goddamn! If we're at the middle of this right now, I'm about to tap out. Because um, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying, if I'm saying, it, as soon as the Vince McMahon thing hits, uh, we ought to say thank you very much. Good night. Yeah, this is uh, what I would call less than ideal. 
Yeah, this is brutal. Yeah. Friday the 13th, 10 p.m. at the Neon Moon right here in Memphis. Then just a day from there, Saturday, June the 14th, wrestling returns to the Big One Expo Center. It's been a long time coming. 2 p.m. Saturday, June the 14th at the Big One. An action-packed card has been signed for this blockbuster show. Lance, everyone in town's talking about it. Saturday the 14th at the Big One. I guess they're talking about it. They're going to be seeing. It'll be for the very first time for a fact. You saw him there in a moment ago on videotape but tommy dreamer will be in town oh my god this is just awful let's give a shout out to everybody who's watching along with us uh right now a part of our live studio audience we got uh your old pal brooke is with us shout out to her and patrick uh coach keith is here bryant is here uh josh is here coach rosie is here greatly appreciate all you guys coming hang out with us good morning uh bobby and ref adam and Man, we got a good little crew hanging out with us this morning. Yeah, unfortunately, Brooke is. Uh, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, Brooke's husband, uh, Patrick, is here too, and he's as about as obnoxious as you can get. Really? Oh yeah, he's so obnoxious that Lois likes him. Figure that one out. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but that tickles me. We. Yeah, um, me too. Listen, we, uh, we've, we've, we're suffering through here, uh, a pretty rough episode of, uh, USWA from 1997. Yeah. This might be the wrestling show we've watched that had the least wrestling on it. Well, I would say it's, it's had, yeah, it's had almost no wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. They run a lot of casinos here too. Now let's figure they, they've taken a commercial break. They've come back and done nothing but talk. Yes. Let's see if they go to the ring here at all. Uh, Tony, I want you to see this too, because we got sent down here an opportunity for some of those folks uh, who know him. They'll be looking forward to seeing him. Those folks that don't know him, we want to introduce you a little closer to Tommy Dreamer out of the ECW. Let's take a look at what we've got. So we just watched the music video. Oh, it's a promo now. It's you, Jerry Lawler. You faced the top stars in this sport today hulk hogan randy savage rick flair bret hart and the list goes on and on and you always met that challenge whatever happened to the jerry lawler of all what do you think you of the tommy dreamer the title king type of delivery king of the liars king of the hypocrites you see jerry lawler where were you when USWA needed you the most, off defending the AWA title, wrestling for world class championship wrestling, or sucking Vince McMahon. Wow. You see, Jerry Lawler, <laughs> how many times have you turned on the people who loved you the most? I want everyone who loves hardcore wrestling to come to the Expo Center. The big and one. see me expose Jerry Lawler as the worst kind of sellout, a person who sells his soul. Yeah, well, I want to tell you right there, it's a pretty good example. Of my what do you think one of, the things that of the Tommy Dreamer type of promo delivery? Well, in this, the steepling. I hate when wrestlers do this and they talk. Don't do that. I've seen a few do this. Yes. Don't do that. Yes. Whereas Lex Luger would always draw a line like this. <laughs> Are we going to the ring? Uh, is there? No, no they're doing another the commercial. You know what we should do? We should just Kill let ourselves. these commercials play. Yeah. And we'll mute it. We'll mute okay. the commercials. And we'll talk about what we're doing individually and collectively as soon as this is over i'm gonna go from my studio across the hall to the kitchen yeah and i'm gonna get one delicious scoop of ag1 i'm gonna put it in a cup of water okay and i'm gonna pretend that my day started from that point forward okay i'm gonna hope that ag1 can give me the strength and the clarity and the energy to overcome uswa in 1997 
I'm going to hope that AG1 really can replace my multivitamin, my probiotic, and more in one simple, drinkable habit. It's a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source nutrients. AG1 is like your foundational nutritional supplement. They're setting you up for success. 75 different high quality ingredients to give you key daily nutrients and support that energy, that focus, that strength, and that clarity that you need. I'm telling you, if you accidentally skip a day, you will feel a difference. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go right now to drinkag1.com slash WHW. That's drinkag1.com slash WHW. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Oh, goodness, Tony. And we are back and we are still watching some commercials here. Our commercial breaks are less than uh, they were in USWA in 97. How about that? Yeah. Hi, Dennis. Come on down. Come on down. Right now. Oh, I needed help right away, and I remember seeing a commercial about Gaddy Keltner being Benoit Montezzi. So I gave him a call. Car accident. Make one call. That's all, and we'll take care of it. Make one call. That's, that's all. all. Wow. Imagine if Mike Dawkins had a promo, had a commercial. Call five two six two. Is some wrestling yeah. promoter try to jack you around in your name? Just make one call. That's all. To Mike Dawkins, go to gimmickattorney.com and for several thousand dollars, you too can own your dumb shit idea. All right, here we go. Okay. We are right. Yeah. And shut up. There's the mayor. Hey, Ramon, I got some words for you. Wow. The man who signs your check. Uh Oh, big daddy. Cool diesel. Hey. Now, here's a guy who's a complete ingrate. Everybody knows what an ingrate is. Well, no, I guess maybe everybody doesn't know what an ingrate is. You see, you have to have at least a grammar school education to know what an ingrate is. So let me put it a different way for everyone in the greater USWA area. Uh, he's a bad guy. Got it? He's no good. I'm talking about Razor Ramon. Now this, this, this imbecile, this ingrate, Razor Ramon, he, he has nothing. He comes to me with absolutely nothing. Nothing. He says, I'm a rustler. He says, uh, I do impersonations and I know I'm not a very good wrestler, Oh! but if you'll just give me this one chance, if you'll just give me this one break, I mean, I'd do anything to be in the world wrestling federation. So here we take this bum, this oh. guy's a bum, complete bum. <laughs> and we make something of him. And what does he do in return? He, he turns his back. Turns his back in the World Wrestling Federation? Wow. Okay, I might could go along with that if something better came along. Ha! But the USWA? There's only one thing I hate worse than an ingrate. Not someone who's stupid. <laughs> Come on. You think Jerry the King Rawler is your friend? You think these. These people around the, the Memphis area or all around the USWA, do you think they're friends? Do you think they, they care about you? Just because you're, all of a sudden, you're honest. Oh, and you can't take it anymore. No, Vince made me Razor. I'm not really Razor. I, you're right. You're nothing. You're absolutely nothing. You're worse than, than when you came to the World Wrestling Federation. You know what? We don't want you. Oh. No. You want to go to the USWA? You want to stay in the USWA? You want all those imbecile fans to, you know, that, that, that really turned you on? You know, the USWA fans, you know, like, they like you, they cheer you, and that turned you on? Oh, boy, you can have it. You can have it. I'll tell you what else you can have. You can have a match with Diesel. See, I, I, I did it one time, out of the goodness of my heart, only have big plans for Razor and Diesel with the tag team. Now you've changed all that. So I'm going to send in the man. I'm going to send in the man to USWA. And by the way, you won't like him in the USWA. And more importantly, he won't like any of you. And he certainly won't like the tag team partner 
who turned his back. That's right, Razor and Diesel were supposed to be a huge tag team here in the World Wrestling Federation. But no, this Razor screws everything up now because he wants to be in the USWA. He likes it there. Good. Diesel is going to come in and rip your ingrateful heart right out of your body. And then stomp your stupid brain further into the back of your skull. And then, Razor, you and Jerry the King Lawler and all those imbecile fans can have a wonderful, wonderful time. Congratulations. So there we go. Well, of course we saw Vince in Memphis years prior to this, back when he was, uh, wearing the title around his waist and talking about, uh, Tatanka and talking about, uh, the macho man. And, but now here we are in 1997, just a handful of months before the screw job, a handful of months before the character would really be born. And here he is sort of shitting on his own creation. That's down on loan in the USWA. What'd you think of that Vince McMahon promo there, Tony? Well, of course it was great because he was always great on camera, even as just a plain announcer, uh, before he became a heel. But my question is, is he shooting on Scott Hall here? I don't think so. You don't think so? You thought so? Yeah. I, I just think that, yeah. Without Razor Ramon, what are you? Nothing. Right. I, you know, he changed his name from Razor Ramon to Scott Hall. So I, I think he was, I, I, I think part of it was shooting on, uh, shooting on him. So, well, it was a year later, you know, um, this is late May 97. Uh, of course, uh, this is one year after he made his debut on nitro. Right. And who would have thought at this point, and we know Rick Bogner, uh, never really crushed, uh, in the WWE, but the other fellow, that's the fake razor there. The other fellow, Glenn Jacobs, boy, he did. Okay. as Kane. Did he not? Boy, he sure did, man. He had one hell of a run and a great storyline. Isn't that something doesn't matter if you got a great storyline, you can, you don't have to be a great worker. Not, I'm not saying that that the mayor was not a great worker, but you, you can work around things. If you have a great storyline and a great promo, why don't we see more wrestlers wear purple? That's a good question. I don't know. Harley race rocks in purple and Hunter yeah. looked great in purple. Razor looks good in purple. Flair did. Yeah. Let's see some more purple in wrestling. I agree. What do, would you drive a purple car? Well, I kind of did. It was all more of a eggplant color, but, uh, well, that checks out for you. Yeah. Hey, Tony, uh, how many dick pics have you sent in your life? Like total Zero. all together. Zero. You never sent one dick pic. Not one. Well, why is that? You don't think Lois would like a little treat in her inbox? I don't. Uh, why? What? Ye. What? If anything, I would, I would find the biggest dick on the internet, crop it down and said, it's mine. But I'm not taking a picture of my own penis. Why would you ask? Who is the biggest dick on the internet? <laughs> there are a lot of those guys. Well, I'm just asking in your opinion, who's the biggest okay. dick on the internet? Well, I don't know. Let's shit on some people. <laughs> Let's shit on some people. Let's okay. do it. All right. Any any suggestions? Well, we're watching um, we're watching Razor Ramon and uh and, and fake diesel. If there were two characters from AEW that you felt like you could do like fake versions of characters, who would it be? Fake Darby? No. Who, who would be easy to fake? Who would be easy to fake? I don't know, buddy. I'm just trying to make some chicken salad here. I J need J any help J I can J get from you. Just any whatsoever would be helpful. JD, JD Drake. Don't even know who that easy is. To I have fake. to look that up. You don't know who JD Drake is? No. Is he a nice guy? Yeah, he's an idiot. Okay. Okay. And he knows it. I'm looking up JD Drake right now. Okay. You've seen JD Drake and, and Anthony Henry, the uh the work horseman. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah I know yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't actually see uh JD Drake listed on the on the website here though. 
Huh. So maybe we need to look into that. Tony, there is another, um, USWA Vince McMahon promo. I want to show you before we get out of here. And we, we put a bullet in this merciful death. Um, our man, Dave Silva, show. our man, Dave Silva is, is actively trying to work and find that, by the way, I want to remind everybody that Tony is on tour. He's making every single AEW show and tickets are on sale now. AEW com. I know, uh, as folks are listening to this, there's a big dynamite tonight going to be a big rampage on Friday. And of course a huge collision on Saturday, man, the, uh, the, the pay-per-view level main event we got this past Saturday night with MJF and Kenny Omega was something else. And it was on free TV. So if it's been a while since you checked out collision, I encourage you to do so. If you're a football nerd like me, throw it in your DVR and be sure to check it out. You will not regret it. But the thing that everybody was talking about online come Monday oh, was boy. not MJF. It was not Kenny Omega. It was in fact, Tony storm in an orange. Do you want to tell us, uh, your experience with Tony storm in the orange? And can you explain why someone has framed me? Because I guess that was list that orange was listed on eBay. And the person said that they were publishing the listing straight from Huntsville, Alabama, which is a total fabrication. There's zero chance that orange is in town. Right. But talk to me about the orange and the orange withdrawal that you witnessed on AEW. Well, I knew that Tony was going to do something on the table. I thought she was just going to sit on the table, but she yanked the top off and stared at me and then just laid right on the table with her rear end right here in my face. Right. Right. So now I've got a, a girl's rear end in my face and I've got to play straight. Uh, and then she takes an orange. She had two oranges, right? She flipped me one. If I recall or handed me one, I ended up with one. And then she bit the other orange there. There she's handed me one. There you go. Then she bit the other orange and she bit right into it real hard right there. Boom. And orange juice squirted in my face. Uh, so, you, so you, she, uh, so she put the apple in your face and squirted orange in it. No, that's a, that's a, that's a second orange. There are two oranges. Right. Right. Boom. I mean, she bit right. She bit right through that. orange. So I, you know, just set the record straight. Are you selling the, are you selling that orange on eBay and saying that you're from Huntsville? No, I'm not. As a matter of fact, I took that orange and lobbed it over towards Dasha's lap when we went to a break. Because I'll from the, again, from the Conrad Thompson school, I like to fuck around with people. <laughs> <laughs> so I just took out my blop and Dasha Durant like looked at me like what uh, they're asking in yeah, the group. That, they're asking in the group chat. What is, what did the orange smell like? Oh, please. Uh, the answer is, like the answer is orange. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have, uh, one last, uh, Vince McMahon promo for you to check out here, Tony. And then we're going to okay. put a bullet in this very yes. merciful episode of USWA. Uh, but I like watching old heel Vince McMahon. Here we go. Ready to go? The Moon Dogs are going to be here today. We'll see them in action. Get ready for the Moon Dogs. Hey, also right here today, the Native American Tatanka. We'll be seeing him in action right here today. Tommy Wildfire Rich is here today as well. Wildfire Tommy Rich. We'll be seeing him. The fabulous one, Jeff Jarrett. A big deal. USWA wrestling today, boy. Uh, you are absolutely right. Looking forward to it. And it won't be long till the moon dogs will be yeah. around. Stay with us. We'll be right back. To the trail match. The Native American Tatanka going against the king. In Here the we trail. go. Either Tatanka's undefeated string would come to an end. Or the King's reign as a unified champion would end. Well, Vince McMahon had a couple of words about that situation. Let's listen to what Vince had to say. Well, well, well. Oh. How about that? 
Vince McMahon, voice of the World Wrestling Federation, is bestowed yet another honor. <laughs> there have been so many. But none any more than the honor that was bestowed upon me last Monday night. Now, for the benefit of those of you uh, in the Memphis area that, that don't know what that honor was, well, you see, <clears throat> what happened was that... Oh, uh, I, you don't know what happened? You don't... You don't know what this is? Why, the last time you saw this belt, it was around the waist of the, uh, of your king. It was around the waist of Jerry Lawler. But it's no longer around the waist of Jerry Lawler. Get a good look at it. And by the way, don't you think this belt looks much better around my slivet waist than it does around the rather rotund midsection of Jerry Lawler? But it looked best around the waist of Tatanka, the Native American that walked into Memphis Monday night undefeated and walked out of the ring undefeated and with the United Championship. And what are you going to do about it, Jerry Lawler? Nothing. You're not going to do one thing about it. I mean, Vince McMahon, right here, with this, in my hands, Jerry Lawler, your championship belt. Yeah, it's yours. That's right. You can get close up of it. See that? That's right. It's it's Jerry Lawler's, or I should say, it used to be Jerry Lawler. So <laughs> no longer. And Mr. Lawler, I'd like to remind you that um, this Monday night in the rematch with Tatanka, you've got one shot and one shot only to regain it. And we're gracious enough to give you that. And you think you're going to win? Well, let me just say that uh, in history, there was something known as Custer's Last Stand this Monday night. <laughs> Jerry Lawler, it's your last stand. <laughs> All right, so there you go. We'll so cut it so there. But yeah. we, we heard some 1997 heel vents earlier. There's some mid nineties heel vents. What'd you think? Tremendous heel. I mean, you could see it. Couldn't you dude? So great. Was it not? Yeah. Right. Uh, coach Keith just said, Vince said championship belt with two laughing emojis. Vince hates saying championship belt, but he said it himself. <laughs> That's very cool. That of course was, happened in 1993, what we were just watching. So right. we saw a little 93 heel vents, a little 97 heel vents, but maybe the thing that shocked me most of all, and I guess it shouldn't, but did you see the name of the match they had the, the, the segment? I mean, this is with a native American wrestler, right? And they showed up, uh, into the trail match. Yeah. And they, and they showed a, a sad native American shadow on the outline of a horse. What the fuck are we doing? Oh God. Well, you get away with shit on a, on a regional basis back then. That was unbelievable. And, and, yeah. 93. You could. Well, what'd you think, man? You saw a little heel Vince action. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. I, I, I love, and I know he did a couple more too. Didn't he? Oh yeah. He did several yeah. of these taped appearances like that. He even made his way down to the mid South Coliseum once, uh, for a Jerry Lawler match. And as Lawler is, is, is giving chase around the ring, he trips Lawler. I mean, really fun stuff. You could see, you could see that Vince once upon a time was a good sport. It's hard to even imagine modern day Vince even playing along with any of these ideas or silly shenanigans. Is it not? This was done because was this a, de uh, a developmental territory for him or just because he was friends with Jerry? Lawler? Both. It was a favor to Jerry, you know, because Jerry had come up and, and been doing some, um, uh, commentary work and obviously doing the King's court thing and, and working, uh, television tapings with like Bret Hart on pay-per-view and things like that. But also too, this is around the time where Vince was getting close with Jerry Jarrett thinking. Hey, if I get sent up the river for the steroid trial, Jerry Jarrett can come help step in and run the show. 
So he was trying to just, you know, sow some seed and some goodwill and, and obviously, you know, business is on its ass at 93. So he needs a place for some of these other guys to develop. And they're trying to just forge a relationship. You know, one hand washes the other good on Vince for, for having the ability and wiggle room to do that sort of thing. What a career, huh? Dude, a crazy career. And to know that, you know, the idea or the, the seeds of that incredible TV run, we would see in the attitude era with Vince McMahon, he really sort of cut his teeth here and, and did proof of concept in Memphis years before that really great stuff. Of course, we know eventually not only would he have the USWA belt around his waist, but the WWF title and the ECW world title, Vince McMahon, what an athlete. Uh, Tony, we had a lot of fun today. You can pick up some swag to support the show over at loisrules.com. That's easy to do something for everybody from tumblers to t-shirts and everything in between loisrules.com. You can also, of course, support us on Patreon. It's patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday, or of course, adfreeshows.com. No better place to advertise your program than right here with us. If you've got a product or service that's looking for men, 25 to 54 years old, check out advertise with whw.com. And, uh, Tony, I never know what to expect when we click record, but I know we're going to do some ball busting. We're going to laugh at some silly shit and, uh, we're going to have some, some fun. And today was no exception, but right now it looks like it's about that time. You have just witnessed, you have been a part of history on world. What, 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 what happened when, and, and the history is you have seen your first and your very fucking last look at USWA wrestling. Roll Todd. We are desperately out of time. See you next week on what happened when Wednesdays on Westwood one nationwide, but Mondays exclusively and ad free on put your own patreon.com forward slash ad free shows.com. Not really. It's patreon.com forward slash WHW Monday uh, or ad free shows.com. Uh. Boy, we just, we stepped on our own dicks today. Oof. Let's do a do over next week. Shall we? Yes, we do. We will. We'll Thanks see you then. With us, everyone. Okay. The tape Go machines are rolling and all that shit. Go fuck yourself. Goodbye. Step out of time. Oh. All good. Hey, Hey, it's Conrad Thompson here to tell you a little more about what adfreeshows.com is all about. Get early ad free access to more than a dozen of your favorite wrestling podcasts every single week, starting at just nine bucks. That's less than 20 cents an episode each month. And yes, you can listen to them all directly through Apple podcasts or your regular podcast apps. How easy is that? Ad free shows also has thousands of hours worth of bonus content and docu-series like title chase, Eric fires back conversations with Conrad and the insiders plus new series like the book with David Crockett, Monday mailbags with Mike Kyoto and Nick Patrick and a whole lot more. And you want to talk about early. You can't get any earlier than listening to the shows live. You can be a part of the live studio audience as we record the podcast. Plus ride shotgun alongside your favorite childhood heroes for live watch alongs, Q and A's and other interactive experiences every single month. Come on now, see for yourself what thousands of other wrestling fans from around the world have discovered that adfreeshows.com is the best value in wrestling. Check it out today. And Hey, when you do the first week is completely free at freeshows.com.